Shout out to TC. Shout out to Big Hizzle. Hey, we running this shit. Hey, hey, hey. Good girls, bad intentions. Nate, let's go. So I started writing at the age of 10, and I recorded my first song at 12 on an MP3 player in the closet. You couldn't tell me nothing. I could have sworn I had a whole studio set up and everything. Um, looking back now, it was definitely hectic because we had to record everything in one take. The verse, the hooks, everything had to be in one take because it was an MP3 player. It wasn't no software or anything like that. And after we were done, we would listen to it ourselves until we found out how to upload it to MySpace. But um, yeah, it's been a journey. <laughs> So what inspired me to do music was I've always loved music, honestly, and I guess especially because of the fact that um, it was certain music that I could listen to. We grew up in the church and my mom was like, nah. So we had to sneak and listen to um, R&B and hip hop and stuff like that. But I was a fan of all music, gospel and everything. Like people don't even know I was in a youth choir when I was younger. So. You know, I've always loved music. I started off writing poems. And when I watched the five heartbeats, I seen when Duck was throwing away his bad ideas and his sister came, picked it up, put it all together, made one whole song out of it. And I'm like, what if I get all my poems, put them all together and make a song out of it? So um, that's really how it even started. So that's what inspired me, I guess. I have so many musical influences in so many different genres. I really can't name them all, but off top, I would say Jay-Z, Missy Elliott, um, Tony Braxton, which I'm sure is surprising, but you know, Tony, her background vocals is really what draws me in her music. Um, it's so subtle, so if you're not paying attention, you might miss it, but when you're paying attention, it makes the biggest difference. And I try to incorporate that when I'm making my own music also. Uh, for the new school, I would say Lil Wayne, Drake, and I would be lying if I didn't say Nicki Minaj. When people listen to my music, I want them to take away the fact that not all female rappers have bubblegum raps. Like, I believe that men and women could listen to my music and be like, yo, this is fire. And that's what I really want people to, to take away because I feel like um, there's this stigma over female rappers' head that, you know, we all rap about the same thing. And that's definitely not true. I grew up on hardcore rap. So I actually don't like the bubblegum rap. You know what I'm saying? Every now and then, time to time, maybe. But for the most part, I don't like that. So, you know, that's the main thing that I want people to think of when they think of me. Like, I'm universal type stuff. <laughs> um, my creative process really isn't a process. Like, I don't know, because it varies on different occasions, on what mood I'm in, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, Sometimes I already have verses written that I just wrote with no beat because like I said I started off writing poems and then a beat will talk to me and I figure out how to deliver the verses that I already have to the beat without it clashing. I want it to sound like one band, one sound, right? So um, that's pretty much it, I guess. Like I listen to the beat and see how I can deliver on it and add a little razzle dazzle with the um, background vocals on my Tony Braxton. And yeah, I made it great. My first mixtape, Good Girl, Bad Intentions, will be out in May. First single coming soon. I don't know the exact date. So just keep an eye out and tell a friend to tell a friend about it.